So welcome back to another screencast about sets and set operations. And in this screencast, we're going to look at sets that are infinite and try to work with our four basic set operations that we learned in the last video. So many times when we're using infinite sets, we want to really make use of both kinds of notation for sets, both the set builder notation and our roster notation. Set builder notation, if you remember, is where we write a set in terms of the property that all of its elements satisfy. So it tends to be very compact and economical for writing, but it often hides what's actually in it, in which case we want to go to roster notation. It's very important to be able to switch back and forth between those two notations because they reveal different pieces of information about our set. So in what all the examples that follow, let's let the universal set be the set of all natural numbers. Those are the set of all positive integers for us. And A is the set of all natural numbers that are congruent to 0 mod 4. B is the set of all natural numbers that are 0 mod 2. And C is the set of all natural numbers that are 0 mod 3. And I'm not going to be referring back to those definitions all the time in what's coming up, so you might want to write those down and just keep the you know, definitions handy. So let's talk about intersections and unions first of all, uh, and let's play with what we have. Let's try to compute the uh, set A union C. Now this would be the set of all natural numbers that belong to either A or C. Remember union means or, it's a disjunction. And so let's write down what that means. That would be the set of all natural numbers, everything in the universal set, uh, such that N does belong to A, so I would need N congruent to 0 mod 4, or, and the very important word or there, uh, N belongs to C. N is congruent to 0 mod 3. So I'm looking for uh, positive integers that are either congruent to 0 mod 4 or congruent to 0 mod 3. And remember, just to help you think about this, we're going to write this in roster notation now. To help us think about this, uh, to say that an, an integer is 0 mod 4 means that 4 divides that integer. The integer is divisible by 4. And likewise, this here means that uh, 3 divides n. So we're looking for integers that do either one or the other. So uh, 3 would be, the smallest element of that set would be 3. Remember, 0 does not belong to the natural numbers for us. So the smallest element I would have here is 3. Uh, that belongs to the set C here. Uh, the next smallest element would be 4. That belongs to the set A. The next one up, 5 would not be in this because this is neither uh, 5, is neither 0 mod 4 nor 0 mod 3. So the next item in the set here would be 6. 7 would not be in that set because it's also neither 0 mod 4 nor 0 mod 8. Uh, 8 would go in there because that's congruent to 0 mod 4. And we can keep writing this. We'd have 9. Uh, 12 would be next, then 15, 16, and so on. So the roster notation here is helpful to see what's actually in this set, but if you just looked at the roster notation, you might not get a real clear picture about what exactly all those numbers have in common. That's what the set builder notation is for. Now let's flip this upside down and talk about the intersection of A and C. So this would be the set of all natural numbers that are in both A and C at the same time, just like the intersection of two roads. It's kind of on both roads at the same time. That would be uh, the set of all values of N that are 0 mod 4. And instead of OR, we have AND this time. N is congruent to 0 mod 3. So that would be numbers, uh, natural numbers that are both divisible by 4 and divisible by 3 at the same time. And that's going to amount to having the integers that are divisible by 12 this time. 12, 24, 36, 48, and so forth. Again, 0 is not included because 0 is not a natural number. So that's intersections and unions with infinite sets. And let's give a little concept check here to see how well we're doing on this. So the number 10 is an element of which one of these sets? And just by way of reminder, the set B here, which we didn't see in the example, is the set of all integers that are congruent to 0 mod 2. So with that, uh, pause the video and select all answers that apply. There could be more than one in this case. And, in fact, there are more than one. Uh, here is one correct answer, and here is the other correct answer. So A union B and B union C. And to understand why that is, let's just pick apart the number 10. Now, we know the number 10 is not congruent to 0 mod 4. Uh, it's actually congruent to 2 mod 4. It's also not congruent to 0 mod 3. It's congruent to 1 mod 3. But uh, it is uh, pretty easy to see congruent to 0 mod 2. Any even number will be congruent to 0 mod 2. Now, the fact that 10 is congruent to 0 mod 2 means that 10 belongs to the set B, uh, which is the set of all integers, natural numbers, sorry, that are 0 mod 2. And so since it belongs to B, it belongs to A union B, because A union B is the set of all elements that are in either A 
or B, or possibly both. Uh, the fact that 10 doesn't belong to A doesn't really matter. It does belong to B, and that's all that counts here. So it belongs to the union because it belongs to one of the sets in the union. And likewise, uh, the number 10 also belongs to B union C, again, because it belongs to B. Now let's talk about differences and set differences. And speaking of that set B, uh, let's uh, look at the difference B minus A. B minus A. That would mean I am taking all the elements in B and removing anything that belongs to A. So let's set that up. That would be the set of all natural numbers such that N belongs to B, and that would mean 0 mod 2. And I want to remove anything that belongs to A. So I need these the, the final remnants here to belong to be 0 mod 2 and not 0 mod 3. Mod 3 there. Okay, so the set of all natural numbers that are 0 mod 2, so they belong to B, but not 0 mod 3. So that uh, guarantees they don't belong to A. So let's think about what that is. Now B is the set of all uh, in integer 0 mod 2, all natural numbers 0 mod 2. So that's all even integers that are bigger than 0. And we would just need to subtract out uh, any of the ones that belong to A. I just realized I made a mistake here. Let me go back and change that. A is a set of things that are 0 mod 4, not 0 mod 3. Okay, so we're going to subtract out anything at 0 mod 4. So I would be left with a 2. That would be left over because 2 is not congruent to 0 mod 4. 4 would be subtracted out, so that's not there. The next integer that's congruent to 0 mod 2 would be 6, and that remains because it's not congruent to 0 mod 4. 8 would be removed. 10 would stay there. 12 would be thrown out. 14 would be there. 16 would be thrown out. 18, and I think we get the picture at this point. So these are all the integers that are in B, so that they're 0 mod 2, but not in A, so none of them are 0 mod 4. Now let's flip that around, and we saw in one of the concept checks from the last video that reversing the order of the difference here matters here, and it really matters in this case. Let's look at A minus B. Now what would that be? That's the set of all natural numbers such that, let me get my sets right this time, N belongs to A, and so N would need to be congruent to 0 mod 4, and not belong to B, so N would not be 0 mod 2. Okay. Now, um, I want you to maybe pause the video here and think about what this set is going to consist of. Uh, so click the pause button, write down what you think is in this set in roster notation or in some other notation, and uh, come back when you're ready. So actually, A minus B here is the empty set. There's nothing in this set. And to see this, uh, just kind of think about what A and B mean. Uh, if something belongs to A, then N is congruent to 0 mod 4, which would mean that I could write N equal to 4 times Q for some integer Q. But that would make N even, because uh, 4Q is just 2 times 2Q. So anything that's 0 mod 4 must also automatically be 0 mod 2. And so once you subtract out all the 0 mod 2 stuff from the 0 mod 4 integers, you're left with nothing. Uh, nothing is left over. And so A minus B here is actually the empty set. Now one last concept check here to give the uh, notion of complements, which we have not talked about here. Remember, C complement. Let's look at the, the, the big letter C here is the set. The little guy C here means complement. Uh, remember, that's the set. C complement is the set of all uh, natural numbers n such that n does not belong to C. It's just throw everything out uh, that's in C and keep the rest of the universal set. So if you knew that a number m belonged to C complement, what exactly would that mean about m? Here are your choices here, and uh, come back after you pause the video and select. So the answer here is going to be E. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, uh, if m belongs to C complement, uh, that means that M does not belong to C. That's uh, something outside of C. C is the set of all integers that are 0 mod 3. And so if M does not belong to that, that means that M is not congruent to 0 mod 3. And that only leaves two possible choices. It's either 1 mod 3 or 2 mod 3. And so that's the notion of the complement using infinite sets. So uh, that shows how you can use these different set operations in different contexts using infinite sets. Remember to switch back and forth between roster and set builder notation for a full understanding. Thanks for watching.